Hello, my name is Will Hutchings. I'm a planner for the City of Bismarck in the Community Development Department. This video presentation is intended to cover the information that was presented at a public information meeting about the ongoing efforts by the City of Bismarck and partners to place Highland Acres on the National Register of Historic Places. The meeting was held on November 4, 2021 at Highland Acres Elementary and provided property owners and interested citizens information about this effort. At the meeting, the individuals you see on the screen were present to present and answer questions. Since this recording was done at a later date to provide better audio quality, I will present all of the information that was presented during the meeting. This meeting will cover the following topics. A project background and overview, overview of the survey results, the historical significance of the Highland Acres neighborhood, National Register of Historic Places listing facts and myths and provide an opportunity for contact information for questions and answers. The next few slides will overview uh, some of the project background. Talks about Highland Acres being listed on the National Register of Historic Places have been discussed since 2004. In the next few slides, I will cover some of the key benchmark events that have occurred related to the associated survey and formal nomination process. In May of 2009, presentation was held by the State Historical Society on the historic significance of the Highland Acres development to the Preservation North Dakota Conference held in Bismarck, North Dakota. In August of 2017, there was a first meeting of Highland Acres homeowners to discuss the nomination uh, for the district to the National Register. In October of 2017, there was a workshop to train volunteers on how to complete historic site surveys for initial 146 Highland Acre properties. Uh, in January of 2019, research was started to provide material necessary for the historic narrative and statement of significance that's required for a National Register of Historic District designation. On another note, the City of Bismarck, in, in the September of 2018, directed staff to start the process to become what is known as a certified local government. In December of 2018, the Bismarck Historic Society provided a presentation about Highland Acres at the Bismarck Library. And by April of 2019, the City of Bismarck was formally recognized as a certified local government. That provided opportunities for the City of Bismarck to apply for grant funding that will be utilized later to uh, complete some of the work. In May of 2019, one month later, the Bismarck Historic Preservation Commission held, held their first meeting. In August of 2019, the Bismarck City Commission provided a letter of support of Highland Acres Historic District nomination at the recommendation of the Bismarck Historic Preservation Commission. In April of 2020, the City of Bismarck awarded grant funding for the Historic Architectural Survey of Highland Acres. In July of 2020, based on uh, receipts uh, or written proposals for uh, uh, an RFP, Metcalf Archaeological Consultants was selected to complete the majority of the property surveys. In July of 2020 and ongoing through August of 2021, survey work was conducted and compiled by Metcalf Archaeological Consultants and the State Historic Preservation Office staff. Uh, in anticipation that the survey work would feel that uh, there was adequate uh, property significance to create a nomination, the City of Bismarck uh, was awarded grant funding to complete the potential nomination. In August of 2021, it was determined that sufficient historic integrity does exist to support the nomination. By August of 2021, all surveys were accepted by the State Historical Society of North Dakota, in September 2021, Metcalf Archaeological Consultants was selected again, at this time to complete the paperwork necessary for the nomination. This slide overviews the next steps related to the Highland Acres nomination. In January of 2022, the Bismarck Historic Preservation Commission will have an opportunity to review an early draft of the nomination. On February 16, 2022, there will be a final presentation and an opportunity for a public hearing at the Bismarck Historic Preservation Commission meeting. In March of 2022, you will also receive a notification of a state review board hearing, which will be held on April 29, 2022. And that is an opportunity again for the public to attend and provide input. That's state review board presentation and hearing. 
In Jan, Jan uh, sorry, in June of 2022, it is anticipated that the nominations would be submitted to the National Park Service for official consideration. At some point to be determined, there is a 15-day National Park Service comment period. And if all goes well, uh, by August 22nd, 2022, the National Park Service determination will be issued on the potential designation. Talk a little bit now about the establishment of the Highland Acres proposed historic district boundary. Prior to the City of Bismarck's involvement, some residents of Highland Acres sought to establish the historic district on their own, with help from the staff at the State Historic Preservation Office. The area proposed at that time was much smaller and would not cover many of the key aspects uh, that are included in the master plan neighborhood, nor would they follow necessarily the subdivision or the, the historic timelines. In conversations with the State Historic Preservation Office, it was noted that the smallest boundary for the survey should encompass the entirety of the original subdivision plat for Highland Acres. The boundary for the survey was formally established in spring of 2020, prior to the issuance of the request for proposals for a consultant to help conduct the survey. Several boundary options were considered between the city and the State Historic Preservation Office. The primary factors used to determine this area was the original planned and platted area of the Highland Acres subdivision, the age of structures, historic eligibility, and cost. Based on these factors, the boundary was expanded to also include Highland Acres second edition. It is completely anticipated that future expansions could occur to the listed historic district boundary with additional survey work and warranted historic integrity. These include such areas such as Highland Acres Third, Highland Estates, Torrance Edition, Torrance Hill Edition, and portions of Keating Edition. This slide outlines project funding. Funding for the architectural site survey work and the National Register of Historic Places nomination is 100% funded from a grant administered from the State Historical Society of North Dakota with local in-kind donated match provided by uh, time provided by the Bismarck Historic Preservation Commission and MECAP Archaeological Consultants. These projects were funded by the Historic Preservation Fund, National Park Service Department of the Interior. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this material do not necessarily reflect the views of the Department of the Interior. The next couple of slides will talk a little bit about the unique history of Highland Acres. As many young service members returned to Bismarck from their military postings in World War II, Bismarck veterans and their young families noted that affordable, comfortable housing was in short supply. The city of Bismarck scrambled to develop emergency housing, and their initial efforts included remodeling barracks at Fort Lincoln and installing a trailer camp near Memorial Bridge. Unfortunately, these efforts had little impact on the housing crisis. Cooperatives of veterans came together to address the issue. Members of the American Legion, veterans of foreign wars, and disabled American veterans formed a cooperative known as the Bismarck Veterans Homeowners Cooperative Edition, or Association, excuse me. In April of 1946, they took out an ad in the Bismarck Tribune to drum, drum up support and received 150 replies. The organization incorporated a few weeks later with 108 members who each paid in $100 as stockholders to the new association. These funds would allow the organization to build more homes inexpensively than if members tried to acquire materials and build individually. By the 1946, they had located a prospective parcel at the northwest edge of town near the municipal golf course and began planning their development. The original plat filed with the city of Bismarck included space for a shopping center, 14 small parks, two large parks, and one school. Other notable design elements within the original plan included streets contoured with the topography of the land, long, large blocks with big lots, cul-de-sacs and sidewalks on the interior of the blocks instead of around the outside adjacent to the streets. These design elements were very different than the rest of Bismarck at the time. In this aerial image here, you can see the rest of Bismarck has very square blocks with streets at right angles to each other laid out on a north, south, east, west axis. Lots in this older portion of Bismarck had a short frontage on the street and extended long into the interior of the block. Individual lots of Highland Acres are about 30% larger than the standard 100 by 50 foot lots in the rest of Bismarck. The neighborhood was designed in this way for a few specific reasons. The number one reason was to reduce the cost of the development. Instead of grading the entire area flat to allow square blocks, working with the contour of the land reduced the cost of grading. So this is also true with having large blocks and moving the sidewalks to the interior of each block. 
Fewer blocks and fewer sidewalks meant cost savings. After installing utilities and grading streets, the first houses began to rise. The first homes constructed in Highland Acres were built by the association. They hired a full-time engineer to construct 20, which were partially prefabricated in Washington State and shipped to Bismarck and assembled on site. Unfortunately, the Homeowners Association ran into financial difficulties in the early 1950s. In June of 1952, the remaining 246 unsold parcels were purchased by private investors Irvin Wilhite and Arthur C. Hay, who formed a private corporation with a few others, including Frank Hedden, to sell the lots through their capital city development company at Hedden Real Estate. From here, construction of housing became more piecemeal. Hedden, Wilhite, and C. Hay didn't develop the entirety of the subdivision all at once. The lot sold to local builders who would purchase the lot, build a home, and sell it to themselves. Individuals wanted to construct their own homes or other individuals who wanted an architect designed home. There were a lot of different options for those who wanted to live in Highland Acres. Next, I'll attempt to go over the survey results. The survey of the neighborhood was completed in 2020 by teams from Metcalf and the State Historic Preservation Office. The purpose of the survey was to determine if the neighborhood would qualify as a historic district eligible for inclusion in the National Register of Historic Places. Parts of this process was to evaluate which properties would contribute to the district and which would not. Here on the left on this chart is a flowchart of what the process looks like. Teams from Metcalf and the State Historic Preservation Office visited each property within the proposed district and took photos and notes. They then returned to their office and combined these photos and notes with research into a standard form where they evaluated the integrity and recommended eligibility of each resource. Integrity is the ability of a property to convey its connection to the past. If a property has lost a significant portion of its integrity, meaning it has been so altered from its original form that the visual connection to the past has been lost, it cannot be eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. This is how they determine whether properties are contributing to the district or non-contributing. In total, the team surveyed 354 properties. Out of those properties, 297 are recommended as eligible as contributing to the proposed district. That's 83%. The survey also identified opportunities for future work in the Highland Acres area. They identified four properties that are individually eligible and identified an additional nine properties that may contribute for two thematic nominations, one for mid-century schools and one for the earliest prefabricated res residence constructed by Far West Homes. Metcalf also identified some of the character-defining features of the district. What makes Highland Acres unique from other developments at the time? These include curved streets, uh, larger and required setbacks, irregular lots that accommodated the hilly terrain, planned green space, interior sidewalks, and pathways. The survey identified and helped to define the significance of the neighborhood. Significance can mean different things, so let's define that term first. I'm using the definition of historical significance developed by the National Park Service and used in the National Register of Historic Places application. In this case, significance is defined as the importance of a property to the history, architecture, archaeology, engineering, or culture of a community. This significance can be achieved in four different ways. Uh, a, which is association with an event, activity, or a pattern of events and activities. B, association with an important person. C, the distinctive characteristics of design, construction, or form, or D, the potential to yield an important information. If we were to simply list this uh, down to its most important keywords, we might say that a place can be significant for its association with events, people, architecture, and archaeology. Now that we know that, we can talk about how Highland Acres is significant. Under Criterion A, the events category, we can say that Highland Acres represents post-World War II residential growth of Bismarck. As I mentioned earlier, veterans are returning to the United States at the time Highland Acres was uh, initiated, but there isn't enough housing available. That's not just a problem in Bismarck, that's a nationwide problem. So there's a post-World War housing boom along with the post-war baby boom. Highland Acres represents that pattern of post-war events and how that pa pattern played out uniquely within the city of Bismarck. Under Criterion C, Highland Acres is a neighborhood that embodies distinctive characteristics of post-World War II design. 
Here I'm talking about the design of the neighborhood as a whole. The neighborhood was master planned by the Bismarck Veterans Owners Cooperative Association to fit in with the hilly topography and provide curved streets, irregular sized lots, restrictive covenants that dictated how the neighborhood looked with all the houses set back a certain distance from the street, requirements for overall square footage, and planned green space and vegetation. All of those character defining features I identified earlier. Not only is this one of the first time these design elements were used in Bismarck, but they also set this neighborhood apart from other subdivisions. We can also say the district is significant in that it represents the variety of post-World War II residential housing and design. Not only are there quite a range of styles visible in the neighborhood, the way those styles come about is varied. Some houses are architect design, some are lifted directly from the plan books, some are partially prefabricated, and a few were constructed by their first owner. I will now provide additional information about what property can expect if their property is included in a listing on the National Register of Historic Places. There are often many misconceptions about a National Register of Historic Places listing. Listing a property on the National Register of Historic Places or being determined eligible for listing does not automatically preserve a building and it does not keep a building from being modified or even destroyed. Listing on the National Register does provide recognition of a property's significance in history, architecture, engineering, or archaeology. It does provide a tool for local planning, heritage, heritage tourism, and heritage education. It provides some protection in the form of consideration and mitigation of adverse effects to historic properties from federally funded, federally funded or federally licensed projects. The National Register listing provides the owner of an income producing property such as commercial, industrial, or rental residential the opportunity to receive federal investment tax credits up to 20% of costs for a certified rehabilitation. It also provides the owner the opportunity to apply for matching grant in-kind funds for restoration when such funds are available. And lastly, a National Register listing allows the owner to receive technical assistance from the State Historical Society staff on how to follow the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation for both maintenance and rehabilitation of the historic property. A National Register listing does not place restrictions on a private property owner regarding the use, maintenance, or alterations to the property. It does not require the city to restrict the use of the private property, although local ordinances may require architectural review or review of the project by the local preservation commission. Currently, the city of Bismarck has one other historic residential district. There is no additional design review or oversight by a local preservation commission. If that is desired by residents of Highland Acres or any proposed historic district, the city of Bismarck's policy is to require that over 50% of the neighbors in the property owners within the district submit a formal request that the city of Bismarck establish such rules uh, for the city commission to ultimately decide if, if they'll enact that additional kind of control. At this time, there has been no discussion uh, about uh, creating an additional review or additional standards uh, for any historic districts within the city of Bismarck. Uh, again, back to what the National Register listing, uh, it does not require federal or state review of proposed alterations unless federal funding is being used to fund the project. Owners interested in technical assistance with rehabilitation should contact the State Historical Society. The National Register listing does not mean the federal or state government will seek to purchase or place restrictions on your private property. It does not affect the use or the sale of private properties. It does not require an owner of a property to allow public access to their property. It does encourage, but does not require continual maintenance of the private property. It will not require any government entity to maintain private property or to provide funds for restoration or preservation. And, and unfortunately, uh, National Register listing does not provide that historical marker for the, the property, although uh, private property owners are eligible to purchase one through private vendors. During the meeting, the presentation panel took questions from property owners and provided answers. If you have questions that were outlined during this presentation, uh, that were not outlined during this presentation, we encourage you to reach out to myself or Lorna Meininger with the State Historic Preservation Office by contacting us at the number or email listed on the screen. We are typically available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you miss us, we will get in touch with you at our next available time. 
You may also have questions about a separate sidewalk gap project the City of Bismarck City Commission has opted to place on hold until the process to complete the survey and the proposed nomination has concluded. If you have questions and have, want additional information about this sidewalk gap project, please contact Bismarck City Engineering at 701-355-1505 or by email engineering at bismarcknd.gov. You can also mail at the address provided on the screen or appear in person at 221 North 5th Street on the second floor of the City County Building in downtown Bismarck. Thank you so much for listening today. If you have any additional questions, we encourage you to reach out. Bye-bye.